Hey there, once again, YouTubians. As some of you may know, my name is Ben Ferriolo, and if this video is uh, going to be too loud for you, just turn down your volume right now just in case. And I am an amateur seismologist who hopes to make a career out of monitoring volcanic and tectonic hazard areas. This video may be quite long, so please look at the description box below for the parts section. Also, this is the footage of part of the Super Wolf Blood Moon Lunar Eclipse. Let me know if I got that right. That happened last night. Did you get to see it? Let me know what your experience was. It was pretty Pretty cool. And by the way, this camera does it no justice. It was an extremely spectacular spectacle in person. If you haven't seen my recent videos, then please go check them out now. And I also have an ever growing website that you should check out as well if you are interested in seismic activity, whether it be volcanic or tectonic. However, know that my main focus is usually on volcanic activity. A link to my website is in the description box below, right under my email address. Again, if this intro is ever too long for you, please skip forward or you can find the parts to this video below. I always add parts to my videos whenever it's longer than 10 minutes, so you don't have to worry about that. My past two videos have been seen by almost five times more people than all of my recent videos. I don't know why it's all of a sudden bringing new people to my channel, but if you are a new subscriber, I welcome you. In this video, I will very briefly talk about a few recent events, including this strange earthquake off the coast of Maryland, which I think was like a volcanic collapse or something. Very interesting. We'll check that out in a second. But after that, I will show some new content on my website. For those who are new to this channel and don't know about my website, this video is for you. Since I do have a bunch of new viewers, I just want to remind everyone that I am not a professional. It is my aim to eventually become one, but I have been accurately studying seismic data for about six months now. It means I have already learned a great deal, yes, but that also means I still have a lot to learn. However, feel free to reach out to me if you ever have any questions about anything, or to point out any mistakes. Also, please check out a new channel trying to grow called the NW Geology Guy. His name is Scott, and he just started his channel, so go show him support, some support if you want to, excuse me. He's got some pretty good content. The link to his channel is in the description box below as usual. So let's now talk about the recent magnitude 4.6 earthquake off the coast of Maryland. The magnitude 4.0 in Kansas and then Steamboat Geyser did erupt again in Norris Geyser Basin within Yellowstone National Park. If you have already read my blog post containing these topics, then you can skip past this. The main purpose of this video is to show people my recent blog post if they haven't read it since my website gets much lower traffic than my YouTube channel, and to show new viewers what they should expect when visiting my website. It, because, you know, some of my new viewers don't even know about my website, so might as well. So to some of my closest followers, this video probably will mostly be old news. Well, except for a few new pages on the website, that, if you haven't seen them. Especially the exotic uh, events page that I just set up. Pretty cool, I like the stuff that's on there. Very interesting, including meteorites, and you'll see in a second. Now some of this again will be old news to you, however I have updated some pages in this video and I will show many different seismic plots. So this isn't just any old boring video about someone's website. We are actually going to dig into some of the events I talk about very briefly. The least important ones are during the more drop down menu pages. Again, since this video is so long, please skip to a part that you want. This video is also meant to be a part of my website. I will post it on there on a specific page. Don't know which page yet, it might be the home page, but. So here we are in my most recent blog post. So if you've already seen this, guys, if you've already read my whole blog post, then you can skip this and move forward in the video. So here's the USGS event page for the magnitude 4.6 that occurred off the coast of Maryland, off the East Coast, on January 15th, 2019. So just about, about five, six days ago, a little less than a week. Um, it was at about 5.6 kilometers in depth. It was originally labeled 4.7 at 10.0 kilometers in depth, but then they revised it to a 4.6 at 5.6 kilometers. Look at the moment tensor, guys. Look at that. That is the strangest moment tensor. Now, I don't know that much about moment tensors. I'm still trying to learn them, but I found something very interesting. I'll show you in just a second, but look, 263 people reported feeling this. Remember, that is the number of people that reported feeling this to USGS, not the actual number of people. Usually when you see a few hundred people report feeling an earthquake, the count is usually much higher than that, probably in the few thousands or so. Because a lot of people don't know where to report feeling an earthquake, and some people just don't care to. 
So let's scroll down. Here's the location. It says magnitude 4.7, but I made this image before they downgraded it to 4.6. They only downgraded it to 0.1, so it's not that big of a deal. Let's scroll down to the plot. Here is the unfiltered plot of the magnitude 4.6. Again, at about 2330 UTC, January 15, 2019, which is also 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, same date. Magnitude 4.6 earthquake struck at 5.6 kilometers in depth off the coast of Maryland. Now, as you will see in a second, this event was quite peculiar in the way that the energy was dispersed. I have created my own personal event page for this earthquake under Seismic Events 2 under East Coast USA. So go there if you wish to view that. Shows slightly more plots than I will on this blog post here, but here is the three plot image that I generated using swarm and data obtained from Iris for the magnitude 4.6 earthquake. Notice how it appears to be slightly emergent. Notice the high range frequencies. I had to put this all the way up to 50 hertz, which is actually pretty high because the frequencies really went up there, guys. But as you can see on the spectrogram and the spectral plot, the dominant frequencies seem to remain below 5 hertz or at least at about the 5 hertz line or so. Notice the strange characteristics in the dominant frequencies, again, below 5 hertz. This was for sure a very interesting event, even though this was the closest seismic station to this event. It almost looked like, just from these plots alone, it almost looked like some type of volcanic eruption or collapse. So, I decided to do some digging. Below, you will first see the moment tensor. Here, let me scroll down. Let's just show right now. All right, here's the moment tensor of one of the volcanic eruptions that occurred at Kilauea during the mid-2018 eruptions in Hawaii. Just a heads up, I am not the best at reading moment tensors, but I am getting better. Moment tensors can assist scientists in discovering in which way the energy was dispersed from any given event. They look very odd and are sometimes called beach balls. I wanted to compare this moment tensor beach ball from the Kilauea eruptions and compare that to the magnitude 4.6 that just occurred off the coast of Maryland, what I found was quite intriguing. Now, you see this moment tensor right here, right? Notice how the beach ball here appears that this volcanic eruption spread out its energy almost equally in all directions. So imagine where the P is, is where the epicenter of this volcanic eruption was. And let's just say the blue is the energy being dispersed, and that's pretty much how moment tensors work. But notice how it looks like almost evenly throughout all directions. It kind of looks similar to the moment tensor we just saw of Maryland, right? Well, let's scroll down. Look what I have here. Doesn't that look, okay, here's the one from the magnitude 4.6 in Maryland. Here's the one from the volcanic eruption in Hawaii. Do you see that? They look exactly the same, but exactly opposite. You notice that? So it looks like the same thing took place, but the energy was dispersed in an opposite manner. Here, the energy was dispersed equally in all directions. Here, it almost looks like the energy imploded on itself, kind of. Again, notice how this moment tensor looks very similar to the one from the Kilauea eruption, but almost completely opposite. Instead of the energy spreading out in all directions, it almost looked like the energy collapsed in on itself. This is not a normal earthquake by any standards. Could this indicate that this was not a normal tectonic event? Could this indicate that the magnitude 4.6 off the coast of Maryland was some type of collapse event? I wholeheartedly believe so. Remember though, I am still learning how to read moment tensors, but from what I have seen, this does appear to be some type of collapse event off the Maryland coast. Wow, guys. Wow. If so, was this collapse volcanic in nature? You know, that would be pretty crazy, but it would not be unprecedented. There are multiple seamounts underwater near this area, so historically, there have been known to be uh, volcanic activity in this area. Or was there simply just an other underground cavern, excuse me, that was destabilizing over a long period of time and just decided to collapse? Regardless of the cause, this definitely seems like some type of collapse event. Pretty cool, huh? And then there's a magnitude 4.0. See, look, this is what a normal tectonic moment tensor should look like. I mean, this one does look kind of weird, but this is kind of like what it looks like. It should never really look like a fried egg, ever. It really should never look like that unless it's like a collapse event or, a, or an eruption or something like that. Here's the location of the 4.0, right on the border between Kansas and Oklahoma. The 4.0 was felt by 340 people, reportedly felt by 340 people. That count is probably higher by now. It occurred on January 16, 2019 at 334 UTC at 2.5 kilometers in depth. There it is on the heli quarter. There it is right there. Let's go down to the plots.
Amplitudes were slightly cut. The amplitudes actually went all the way up to 10 E5, by the way, which is 1 million amplitude count. And the frequencies were extremely high. Notice how I have the frequency range on the spectrogram set to 85 hertz. Usually 25 hertz is the normal setting. This one went all the way up to 85 hertz. That is high. So this was a pretty strong earthquake. Here is the magnitude 4.0 from Kansas on MCID, which resides at Yellowstone National Park in northwest Wyoming. So it was quite a strong earthquake. Even showed up to about 1,000 amplitude count at Yellowstone. So. That was definitely a pretty strong earthquake. Steamboat Geyser erupted for the second time of 2019, which is the 34th time since it reactivated in early 2018. It erupted, let's see, the first eruption of 2019 was on January 4th. This eruption occurred on January 16th, 2019. Here's the plot to it. It's still a very small eruption, but it is a little bit stronger than the last eruption. Seismic Station YNM, here's the helicopter for the steamboat eruption, and there it is, right there. Next, let's check out some of the pages on my website, including the new ones. I'm sure some of you will be interested in the seismic images and plots that I have for you. Remember, if any of you notice a mistake or that I'm doing something wrong, please do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section below. As long as you are polite, I will definitely not be displeased. If you already know about all of these pages, please look at the parts section below and skip to Exotic Seismic Events, which is the brand new page that probably a lot of you have not seen yet. Now this here is my Seismo blog, and is one of the main sources that I use to put out my research, except for my YouTube channel and the Seismic Events drop down menus. Of course this blog will be mainly about Seismic Events, but I will also use this to update people about my progress in my career, or any other major life changes. It is a personal blog, but mainly will be about recent Seismic Events. This is meant to run in tune with my YouTube channel, so I always tell people to monitor both my channel and my blog and the two seismic events drop down menus so this one right here uh, this one and this one have a lot of my research so check that out accessing seismic helicopter archives now if you have seen my website since it was created then you know that I used to keep a seismic archive for helicopter charts from multiple different stations from multiple different volcanoes I did it for a few months but had to stop why? It was taking far too much time to do and cut into my research and free time with my family. I thought it was important, but why not show others how to quickly access the seismic images? That is why I made this page. This will show you just how quick and easy it is to access seismic data and look at the seismic helicorders. You know the blue charts that are on, is this thing on .org? Yeah, those are called helicorders. And you can find them, find the data, and look at the helicorders, which is very simple. And again, which are much like the ones shown in is this thing on .org and many other websites. And on this page, I do have two videos showing you just how quick and easy it is to find this stuff. And then I have like a step-by-step -step process down here. Not going to read that right now, but it is definitely helpful. So check that out if you want to learn how to access helicorders for even remote stations that pretty much nobody can find. Here's the how-to drop-down menu. This shows you how to read spectrograms, seismic plots, and more. This has a bunch of information, guys, so do not forget to read this page right here. If there are any mistakes, please let me know. This will show you how to use the JAMA Size program. This will show you how to use the Swarm Seismic program, which I use the most. And this will also show you how to use the Waves Seismic Analysis software. This will show you how to find and download seismic data so you can review them in these three programs. And to understand UTC, Universal Time Code, which is actually what seismologists use the most. Really, you're going to have a hard time with seismology, or at least monitoring seismic areas. You're going to have a hard time if you don't understand UTC, because that's pretty much the main thing that everybody uses. Now here's the Seismic Events drop-down menu. This is a non-clickable menu. I will get to Seismic Events 2 in just a moment. You can see numerous pages in this menu, such as the New Exotics Event page, the pages for Steamboat Eruptions for both 2018 and 2019, 2008-2009 Dike Intrusion at Yellowstone Lake, the Yellowstone Supervolcano, which contains most recent swarms and large activity, and the 2018 Kilauea Lower East Rift Zone Eruptions. Alright guys, this is the new page that I just set up the other day, so some of my longtime viewers probably actually won't even know about this. Remember 
remember, just like the other Seismic Events pages, this page will be updated as time moves on, and information may be added to it from time to time, including new events. But I already have a good amount of events on here. Let's check them out real quick. Let's go down to magnitude 2.5 chemical explosion on December 21st, 2018. I have a plot to that. Let's go down. A magnitude 2.9 rock burst on September 2nd, 2018. I have the definition for that if you click there. And remember, some of these images will be in slideshow format. And I do have the plots. Some of the events are filtered differently, but I label whether it's a high-pass filter, a low-pass filter, or it's unfiltered. Let's go down. Magnitude 3.4 collapse of a mine. A mine collapse created a magnitude 3.4 earthquake on May 5th, 2018 in Poland. And I do have these seismic plots for the mine collapse in Poland right there. Magnitude 3.9 induced or triggered event in Canada. If 413, 2018, so that's April 13th of uh, 2018. Here are these seismic plots for that. Let's go down. Now, this is the interesting one. Magnitude 1.8 meteorite. Walled Lake, Michigan. Do you guys remember this when they were talking about it on the news and, man, people were going crazy? On January 17th, 2018, there was a meteor seen and heard in the Detroit area. Location is approximate. The experience sound and shaking from this event was created in the atmosphere by the meteor and not the impact of it. And I do have these seismic plots for the meteorite airburst over Michigan, which a lot of people were freaking out about. It was pretty cool, guys. And a, yes, it did show up on seismic stations over a large distance, actually. Then I have an example of a magnitude 2.6 ice earthquake in Alaska, which occurred on September 28, 2017. Let's scroll down. And I do have the plots to that as well, but with a high-pass filter because it was pretty small in the background microseisms, which is the background activity, was pretty much getting in the way. Let's scroll down. This one was very interesting to review, guys. Very interesting. A magnitude 6.3 nuclear explosion in North Korea. This was their most recent nuclear test. Possible explosion located at the site where North Korea has detonated nuclear explosions in the past. I think it's funny because right here it says, Located near the site where North Korea has detonated nuclear explosions. Wait, huh? They detonated the explosion itself? No. <laughs> they should have said detonated nuclear devices or nuclear weapons or whatever. Because you can't detonate an explosion because an explosion happens after it's detonated. I just, thought, I just thought that was funny. And I do have the plots to that as well. And guess what? Let's scroll down. And by the way, this is from the closest station. Here it is right here. Notice how it says MCID, stationed from Idaho, USA, right on the south western tip of Yellowstone National Park. The explosion, the nuclear blast in North Korea, which registered as a magnitude 6.3, wow, it showed up that far away at 6,000 amplitude count too. So that was pretty strong. I was very surprised it showed that strong, uh, pretty much almost halfway across the world. And then about eight minutes and 32 seconds later, there was a magnitude 4.1 collapse, which is most likely the cavity collapsed because of the sheer amount of pressure and stress added onto the surrounding rock because of the large nuclear blast underground. And there is the plot of the collapse right there. Let's scroll down. Now here's a magnitude 4.2 landslide in Umanak, Greenland. Now this 4.2 landslide did create a tsunami. It occurred on June 17th, 2017 at 2339 UTC. Here are the plots of this event as well. And remember, if you ever see a slideshow, you can pause it or you could scroll through with the arrows. And so let's scroll down. That is the landslide. Now here's a magnitude. This one was weird. I don't know what is going on. This one really just, I, 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 I don't know. Just check this out. A magnitude 3.8 experimental explosion. East northeast, 170 kilometers or so, of Flagler Beach, Florida, putting it off in the ocean. You see that? Jacksonville, Florida is right here. Orlando's right here. Here's the east coast of the United States, right where Florida is, right? This is underwater. A magnitude 3.8 experimental explosion underwater? Okay, I really don't understand what experiment that they were doing during this time period, but I will update this text in this area right down here and other areas whenever I do find out because I'm going to email USGS about that. Here is the plot of the 
strange experimental explosion off the coast of Florida. Now let's go down. There's a second one. Actually, there were about five within a few months or so. And multiple people did feel these explosions. So what were they doing off the coast of Florida? An explosion off the coast of Florida underwater that caused around a magnitude 3.8 earthquake. That's a pretty strong explosion, guys. Let's go down. Then I have a magnitude 5.3 nuclear explosion in North Korea, one, another one of their nuclear tests, and it did show up on MCID, which is in Idaho. Let's go down, and here are the plots from the Costa Seismic Station for the nuclear blast. A 3.7 collapse of a mine in Virginia on July 18th, 2016. Unusually large collapse of a long wall mining operation in Buchanan County. And I do have the plots to that as well. The largest mining explosion that I could find, I put on here. It was on October 23rd, 2014 at 1505 UTC. Here are the plots to the one of the largest mining explosions I've ever seen for the United States. There are some larger ones elsewhere in the world. But I picked this because it was in the United States. Actually, just east of Yellowstone. Right on the border of Wyoming and South Dakota, I believe it is. Here's a magnitude 4.2. Okay, so this looks like an earthquake, right? It doesn't even, it's not even marked with anything. It just looks like a normal magnitude 4.2 earthquake. Well, look at this. 215 2013 at 320 UTC. That is February 15th, 2013. What else happened on February 15th, 2013 in Russia? The Chelyabinsk meteor. Notice how it is, the epicenter is at Chelyabinsk, Russia. And the meteor hit at 320, 26 UTC. And oh look, the exact time of this magnitude 4.2 earthquake was 320, 26 UTC. At 0, 0.0 kilometers in depth, obviously. Three people reported feeling it, but obviously many, many, many more people uh, actually felt it because this was the meteor. Again, this text is for the event directly below. Although USGS did not mark this event as a meteorite, this magnitude 4.2 event in Chelyabinsk, Russia occurred at the same exact time as the airburst and explosion of the infamous Chelyabinsk meteor, even down to the second. It is unknown why this was not marked as a meteorite, but the source is undeniable. This event's date Data will be taken from station ARU in the II network, which was closest to the station. The vibration from the airburst took about 90 seconds to reach ARU. Again, the event below shows the data for the Chelyabinsk meteor, which struck Russia on February 15, 2013 at 320 UTC. The infamous Chelyabinsk meteor, and here it is. Multiple filters, here's a low-pass filter, so frequencies above 1 hertz are filtered out. Here it is unfiltered. Looks very peculiar, doesn't it? Very, very peculiar, but that is the Chelyabinsk meteor, which I thought was awesome. Then I put an example of a sonic boom on here. I couldn't really find many good ones since they were very tiny on the seismic plots. But on June 23rd, 2012... At 8.57 UTC, Newberry Caldera Volcano saw some sonic booms, probably from some training exercises, because they do a lot of that stuff in eastern Oregon and eastern Washington. So, probably just a low-flying jet hitting the sound barrier. Go down. This one was one of the freakiest, freakiest events I have ever seen, except for the Mayotte event. You know, on November 11th, 2018. Remember that strange seismic event that people were scratching their heads about? Even the most, even the smartest seismologists out there said they had no clue what it is. Well, now they're thinking it was possibly the collapse of a magma chamber. I'm still denying that because it doesn't make sense how the frequencies were so perfect. But regardless of that, check this out. On February 5th, 2010, there was a magnitude 6.2 rock burst in the Southeast Indian Ridge. Look at this. There's the moment tensor. Now let's go back up real quick. I'm going to read this. This text here is for the event directly below only. I know I have already showed what a rock burst looks like earlier on this page, but the event below is extremely peculiar. Usually rock bursts occur in mines and never occur at magnitudes near a magnitude 6.2 uh, earthquake. Excuse me. So what caused a rock burst at the Southeast Indian Ridge in 2010? When I find out, I will update, update this text. Excuse me. As usual, I will show the USGS event page, which I did. 
did the plots for the closest seismic station and will also show the plots from MCID in Idaho since it detected this event as well. This magnitude 6.2 event was not an earthquake but a rock burst underwater not in a mine. This was the strangest, strangest event that I... Look at that. Look at that right there. Does that not look like the Mayotte event? To me, that looks exactly like the Mayotte event near Madagascar in Africa. Yeah, that looks very similar. Look at that. So this was a rock burst near a tectonic fault underneath the ocean. So I really don't understand how this could happen, but it did. And it was so strong. The rock burst was so strong that, yes, it did show up in Idaho, USA, right on the southwestern tip of Yellowstone National Park. You can barely see it, but it is right there. I thought that was pretty damn cool. Let's go back up to seismic events and go to the next page, which is Steamboat Geyser 2019. Now, this is the Steamboat Geyser 2019 page. This shows some information about Steamboat Geyser, and then at the end shows all seismic images and plots of every Steamboat eruption of 2019. Now, this is usually updated within an hour or so of a Steamboat eruption. Unless, of course, it erupts in the middle of the night. Then I would get to it in the morning, but I try to do it as quick as possible once I hear about a new eruption. Let's go back to Seismic Events, go to the next page, which is Steamboat Geyser 2018. Now, this is the Steamboat 2018 page. Since 2018 is over, and the total count of eruptions for 2018 was 32, this page will show you the seismic images and plots of every single Steamboat eruption of 2018. Yes, that is right, guys. Every single eruption of 2018. However, one eruption did occur when Seismic Station YNM was offline, so I did have to add the water plots instead of the seismic plots since the data was unavailable. Don't worry. That will only happen when Seismic Station YNM is offline. Here is some strong... Let's go to some of the stronger eruptions, shall we? But this is the 13th eruption of 2018. Occurred at 2010 UTC, August 4th. Then let's go up. We got many, many more. I have the helicopters and the three plot images. Here's the 14th eruption, 15th eruption, 16th eruption, 17th eruption, and so on and so forth. And you can even use the amplitude on the size of the chart to compare which ones were bigger and which ones were smaller, which I actually thought was pretty cool. Here we are in Seismic Events. Let's go to 2008-2009 Yellowstone Lake. This is the Seismic Events page for the dike intrusion of magma in 2008-2009 at Yellowstone Lake. This page will show some brief information and contains multiple, multiple seismic images and plots for this infamous swarm. This is one of my favorite seismic events I get to study, and boy, it is quite fun to study. Remember, guys, I'm not doing this for money or for any other reason. I'm simply doing this for fun, since this is actually what I enjoy doing. Here we have some plots of some possible magmatic resonance or degassing of the magma chamber. Don't know exactly what were causing these low-frequency events, but they seem to peak on December 29th when activity started to skyrocket. Yeah, it definitely was a very concerning swarm. Dominant low frequencies. Notice how the frequencies usually remain around 1 hertz, going a little bit below, a little bit above. Right in the range of harmonic activity. I still love looking at these plots, guys. This is definitely one of the most interesting seismic events I've ever gotten to study. Now let's go up real quick, and I do have some more plots there, some more plots there, and multiple heli quarters from LKWY, which was closest to this seismic event. Check this out if you want. Let's go up to seismic events, and let's go to Yellowstone Supervolcano. This blog for Yellowstone Supervolcano is mainly and strictly for major events and swarms that occur recently. For example, I already have two pages for two separate swarms, the New Year's Eve swarm and the January 6th, 2019 swarm. This blog, along with my YouTube channel and Seismo blog, should be monitored whenever you see seismicity increase at Yellowstone. Of course, I will not be able to cover every single event and every single earthquake, but I will try to cover most of the major events and swarms that occur at Yellowstone, especially the ones that are of the utmost importance to me. Now, this is the blog post for Yellowstone Supervolcano for the swarm that occurred on December 31st, December 30th, for those here in the United States, somewhat, 
Um, yeah, on New Year's Eve. Pretty much right when New Year's Eve, not New Year's Day, but New Year's Eve was starting. Here's the location of the swarm. And I got some information. Multiple plots. Multiple, multiple plots, guys. Multiple helicorders. Doesn't look that big right there, does it? Doesn't look that crazy. But let's go to Borehole 208 and you will see. Just uh, look at that. Yeah, guys, it was insane. Within about 5 hours and 35 minutes, there were 200, about 255 earthquakes. They only reported about 53 to 55 of them. And I think I even have the seismic audio of this swarm too. So, come check this post out. Very interesting. Personally, I believe this was definitely caused by a small amount of magma, but you never know. Let's go to seismic events again. Go to Kilauea Lower East Rift Zone. All right. Here's the seismic events page for some of the events that transpired during the mid-2018 Hawaii eruptions. I show some information, of course, but I also show a large number of plots pertaining to the collapse of Puoo. Where'd it go? I just lost it. Where'd it go? There it is. The crater collapse at Puoo. Notice that? I do have the plots to that. I was able to find it. I was very happy. It even shows it on the helicorders right here. Then I show lava lake draining and the effects from it and go down and I also show the volcanic eruptions at Kilauea Caldera. I do have the seismic audio for three of the Kilauea eruptions and then they do have the plots to about 20 of the eruptions. There were about 63 explosive eruptions during the entire eruption period in Hawaii. And I also show how some of the volcanic eruptions in Hawaii at Kilauea, the explosive ones, actually were detected on seismic stations thousands of miles away, especially at Yellowstone. Oh, this one actually isn't at Yellowstone. This one's NLWA in Washington State. Showed it quite well, which I thought was very intriguing that a volcanic eruption could be detected that far away. Here's the Seismic Events 2 drop-down menu. The first Seismic Events menu was getting to be too long, so I had to create a whole new menu. Since I don't like long menus. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just a pet peeve of mine. You know, first we see Cascade Volcanoes Low Frequency Events for 2017 to 2018. Of course, not many plots have been uploaded to here for 2017, but I do have multiple plots here already for low frequency events that have occurred at Cascade Range Volcanoes. Only Newberry Caldera in Oregon has been shown so far, seeing that that is the volcano with the highest number of low-frequency events recently. Remember, low-frequency events can be caused by a multitude of processes, but when you see some at volcanoes, it can signal that the magma may become restless at some point in the near future. Regardless of the implications, this is a pretty cool page, seeing that I live near multiple Cascade volcanoes. Next, we see long-distance microseisms. One of the first things I discovered when starting out was the presence of strange vibrations in North America that travel hundreds, if not thousands, of miles. This page does not have that much data pertaining to it, but I will add more to it soon. Next up, we see United States, East Coast USA, and the world. The world page is mainly for very large earthquakes above magnitude 8, except for the Mayotte event, which is one of the most mysterious seismic events ever detected, and I loved analyzing it. Let's go to Cascade Volcanoes real quick. This is the Cascade Volcanoes Low Frequency Events page. A 2019 page will be created eventually when new low frequency events are reported by PNSN. Remember, all seismic plots on my website are generated by myself using the seismic program Swarm and data obtained through IRIS or the NCEDC, unless stated otherwise. Now let's real quick go up. I just want to show you a few of these plots. All of the plots so far on this page are from Newberry Caldera. Let's go down. And now you can't zoom in on these, but if you want more in-depth images, you can email me, or you could also use your browser to zoom in, too. But I also do have some brief info on each side, and it goes back and forth. Down here, the info's on the left. Down here, the info's on the right. Back and forth, back and forth. Multiple low-frequency earthquakes detected at Newberry. I show a lot of them. Few, uh, what appears to be low-frequency tremor. Some of this stuff kind of concerned me, so I had to email, because sometimes quarry and mine blasts can look very identical to low-frequency earthquakes or low-frequency tremor, but I did contact the local quarries and mines, and they say that during these time periods of these events, they were not doing anything. So, definitely very interesting. Now let's go to long-distance microseisms. Here's long-distance microseisms again. 
Got some very interesting things on here, but very brief. I got actually a very long video. A map of the stations I used, some heli quarters showing the, notice you can see an increase of activity and then a decrease at the end around the same time period. So in-depth plots and the tilt plots, which actually did not work out very well on this website, they look very tiny. I don't know why they did that, but they did. Oh well. Now this is the Seismic Events blog for the United States. Now most of the events that occur in the United States are usually posted elsewhere on this website since I live in the United States and that's my main focus. So this blog is mainly for major events such as future volcanic explosions, large magnitude events over magnitude 7 in the United States, and so on and so forth. This is probably the least touched Seismic Events page. But still, you never know when I will add new content, so check back here from time to time. If there are any mistakes or any updates that need to be made, please let me know. Let's go to East Coast USA. I already have two events on here so far. Magnitude 4.6 off Maryland, which I believe is a volcanic collapse event. Come here. I do show a few more plots on here than I did on my Seismo blog post. Now, again, this is the Seismic Events blog page for events that specifically occur near the East Coast of the United States. I already have one event on here at the bottom, and then I also have the post for the Magnitude 4.6 in Maryland that I talked about in the beginning of this video. Again, check back here from time to time if you want, seeing that you never know when I will add new content, even from old events. Now, let's go to World, just real quick. Here's the World Seismic Events page. This will be primarily for major earthquake events in the world above magnitude 8. However, not every major event will be posted. Notice I already have the 2010 magnitude 8.8 .8 in Chile. And then I also do have the infamous magnitude 9.1 Japan mega quake and mega tsunami. And let's go up and the Mayotte events from many, many, many different seismic stations around the area and you can see multiple I filtered it differently actually this is from one station one station this has a high pass one hertz filter so all the lower frequencies you can't see here's a low pass one hertz filter and then a band pass 0 0.06 to 0 0.1 hertz filter looks pretty cool huh Let's hover over the more drop down menu. Now the rest of my website content is important, yes, but the majority of the plots are contained in the pages that are not in the more drop down menu. That doesn't mean these aren't important though. For example, we have Seismic Software. This will show you the download location and basic installation steps for three select seismic analysis programs that I use every day. Remember, the how-to drop-down menu does show you how to use those three programs. Next, we have Network Coverage Help. This is mainly for people who already have seismic programs and access to data, but they don't know which network to use to gather the data from. This page should help, but if it doesn't, please contact me. I am able to find seismic data that is extremely hard to find, especially from networks that seem hidden. Next, we have earthquake examples. The majority of the images on this page are not generated by myself and will be stated if so. This should serve as an example for people trying to understand the difference of a multitude of different seismic events. However, I must warn you about something. Want to know how I have learned all that I have learned? Comparison. That is the number one most important thing when you teach yourself something, is comparison. I have learned so much by doing something so simple. Just take a known confirmed event, such as a well-known harmonic or volcanic tremor event, a well-known sonic boom, a well-known nuclear blast, so on and so forth, and analyze that event. Then take note of the characteristics. How did the waveforms look? What was the dominant frequency? One of the main things that has helped me so much is knowing about seismic frequencies. Need help? Either peruse my website for the info or contact me. I try to reply to as many comments and emails as I can, but just know I cannot get to every single one of them. Next, we have Earthquake Statistics. Notice that Earthquake Statistics is not a clickable button, but the pages are. Notice that I do have Yellowstone Caldera, Long Valley Caldera, Newberry Caldera, Mount Rainier Stratovolcano in Washington, and Cascadia Subduction Zone. 
These pages will show you the reported earthquake statistics for any given area. Be wary though. Reported earthquake counts are only the events reported, not the actual count of earthquakes. For many locations, especially at Yellowstone, the actual number of seismic events is much higher than the reported count. For example, many recent swarms at Yellowstone have only seen 10 or 20 percent of the earthquakes reported. That is why monitoring these areas with seismic data is paramount. However, it is very difficult difficult to go through a year's worth of seismic data, let alone 10 years worth. These pages also have bar charts showing the totals and how they have either increased or decreased. Also, I have not updated these pages yet for 2018's activity, but I will do that soon. Now the links page obviously contains every single link to every single source I use. Is there a link that I forgot to add? Please let me know, but I know this page will be helpful to some of you since it contains almost every single link in my bookmark folder. Now the about me page is obviously about me, who I am, and what I believe. This is kind of a dull picture. We need to find a better picture to put on here because we were all really tired. This was in the morning. But that's me and my family. That's my fiance Jordan, my son Eli, and my daughter Claire. And that's me. Woohoo! The contact page shows some simple contact information, and the old Seismic Image Archive is the old archive that it used to keep up but took too much time and too much effort to sustain. It is much easier to look at the seismic images when you download them than to create a whole archive. That is why I created the Seismic Archive page right here, which is right next to my Seismo blog, to teach you how to access that data yourself and look at the helicorders, you know, the blue charts like on isthisthingon.org. Yes, you can access those very, very quickly for anywhere in the world pretty much. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing some of the information and plots that I have generated for you guys. Remember, all of this is free and done on my spare time, and I'm going to say probably about 75% of my research is on my website right now, but there I do have some other page that I, uh, pages excuse me, that I am working on right now. Just know that I do all of this for fun, since this is my hobby, and I really hope to make it more than a hobby someday. However, just know it may be kind of hard to, since I would never lie to the people. I would rather lose my job than lie about a coming eruption, so feel comfortable knowing that I will always let you guys know if an eruption may be approaching for any volcano in the United States. I, of course, am not able to monitor every single volcano, but I monitor all of the major ones. I am actually working on a few new pages to my website right right now, so this isn't it folks. There is still more content on the way for the next few months. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you enjoy my research? Am I doing it correctly as an amateur? Please let me know how you truly feel, because I want a real feel of how I am doing from my viewers, and especially my new subscribers too. Although I pay attention to multiple events and locations, Yellowstone Super Volcano in Northwest Wyoming is the pinnacle of why I do what I do. Even if I become a professional seismologist on the opposite side of the world, I would still pay extreme close attention to Yellowstone. I believe it is charging for a large eruption, but I would be a liar if I said that there was a likely date. There are many articles and videos circulating online right now dealing with a possible coming super eruption at Yellowstone. Just know, there is enough magma in the reservoir and a large enough conduit to lead that magma to the chamber, but as of right now, there is no sign of an imminent eruption no matter what anyone tells you. Just know that to me, imminent eruption means about six months or so. However, as many eruptions and swarms have proven in the past, that can change within just days. I will try to be here as much as possible to report on Yellowstone, but know that Long Valley Supervolcano in California, which resides right near Yosemite National Park, is charging for an extremely large eruption as well, and just might be closer to the one than Yellowstone is. Regardless of this, we should never live in fear, even if a volcano was sprouting under your feet. God does not give us the spirit of fear, guys, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. God bless, and be safe in this ever-increasingly crazy world. And please let me know in the comments section below what your experience was with last night's total solar, or actually, excuse me, total lunar eclipse. I can't believe I almost called it solar. It was so cool, guys. My goodness, it was so red at one point. I just couldn't believe my eyes. That was the first time ever seeing anything like that. It was pretty cool. Now remember, the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear the truth, and boy, that is the truth. Alright guys, Ben Ferriola signing off. See you later.